rush. Don't take your time. <laughs> you, you, you're, you're more important than me. I'm just a figurehead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good morning. Glad you can be with us. We have some friends and visitors today. My brother is here. Don't talk to him. Uh, Jackie, Jackie's brother and uh, sister-in-law are here, and uh, you can tell the difference because my brother is my height and Jackie's brother is her height. So, yeah. It reminds me of picking on my old pastor because he was short too, but he would always pick on me first because I was bald, so I had no problem taking it to him. So. Uh, Jim's a nice guy. He's been hunting in uh, not this specific area, but he's been around hunting pheasants in the past and stuff like that. So, But they have to hit the road pretty early, so he should talk to some of the people. He can get in on some good hunting ground probably. Um, I want to remind you, we have a, a new reading plan for this year. really want to encourage you, especially the way the year has already started out. What a heck of a year already. Um, I don't want to talk about any politics stuff today, but uh, definitely been a week. And um, so we definitely need to be in the Word this year. This is a really nice, easy reading plan that gives us a couple days off each week when we uh, fall behind. Um, I had a great interaction with Bonnie asking about different Bible, verse, uh, Bible versions and different ways to like uh, read or go through the Bible. And uh, there's some, uh, if you have any questions on that, let me know. There's some awesome, uh, what we do with the kids right now is we just, we go to YouTube and we have somebody else read the ESV Bible with the words and we follow along. and. It's a nice, easy way for us as a family to do that. It keeps their interest because it's the TV and stuff like that. So there's all kinds of different options for listening or reading or following along. And, and if, we, uh, if we ever needed it, we definitely needed it last year. And now this year, we're definitely going to need it again. Um, celebratory morning, which is so good. It's a gloomy day, which kind of fits the tone of a few things we have to talk about today. Um, but overall, I'm glad that we have a baptism to celebrate this morning. We finally get to baptize Micah. Um, I don't know how to word it. Like I, I got tested last week just to be safe because I was sick. I, I couldn't talk last Sunday. I'm thankful to everybody who filled in, stepped up on that. And um, uh, I don't know how to word it though. Like, did I did I pass the test by failing, or did I fail the test? Which is, so I, I don't know how that works because it was a negative test, thankfully. Um, and then we have a birthday to celebrate tomorrow, 80th birthday. So there's some snacks downstairs for that. Clara, we're glad you could be with us. I'm glad to see you. And uh, so the, the, big, the big sad news this morning is um, Ivan and Priscilla's uh, daughter's husband, so their son-in-law and their grandson, um, they fell through the ice and uh, drowned yesterday evening. Uh, I think it was the evening, seven, was it seven-ish? Um, and uh, on Lake Ponset. And so we want to keep uh, their family in prayers, Kim, Kim and her family in our prayers, and then obviously by extension, uh, brother, her brothers and their and many of the cousins and such who are here with us. So um, I can't imagine going through something like that, especially with the way things have been. And, um, you know, it's uh, one of those things is life, life and death is always staring us in the face. We hope it doesn't come to roost in our homes. Um, when it does, we have a lot of questions. We wonder why and how. And, and so we pray for comfort for the family that they can get through this time and try to figure out and understand what this means for their life going forward now and you know where's God in all this as well we always want to know what's he what's his plan as we struggle with uh, sin and the consequences of sin in our world and things like that and, and life and death that way so keep them in prayer uh, we have a congregational meeting next week we'll also install and bless our council members that day and so I hope you're able to be with us uh, that Sunday and uh, join in us in that as well any uh, other things we need to be aware of? Any announcements or other prayer requests? Um, oh, uh, Steve Bamberg texted me. Stan Gerlach's in the hospital again as well. Um, mostly lung-related, I would assume, again this time. So keep him in prayer, too. Um, anything else, though? I don't know how to interpret that one. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, um, I invite you to rise as you are able. We'll open with our... I always forget to turn this on because I have the microphone there. Open with our call to worship. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm, Psalm 29. We read responsibly together. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. 
The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to sink like a calf, and his like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth, and it strips the forest bare. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. We continue in prayer. Father, we come before you today in your presence, seeking you to minister to us through your service, we are opening your word to us, guiding us with your Holy Spirit, celebrating a joyous baptism today, but also mourning and asking you for guidance and comfort and an understanding and as we deal with consequences in the world around us. But we take ourselves back to what you said in your psalm this morning. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. And so we ask that this morning in the name of Jesus, that you give us your strength and give us your peace. In his name, amen. Congregation may be seated. And our opening hymn is, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus.
invite you to please rise as you're able as we continue with the confession of our sins before God. Let us bow before the Lord and confess together. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. confessed our sinfulness before God and we turn to his word for the clear declaration that his grace has been given to us. We read from 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 when he says, if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. No exceptions, anything and everything taken away forever. That is God's declaration to us. Amen. Congregation may be seated. And we continue with our baptismal hymn, Children of the Heavenly Father.
All right, we'll see how this goes since I'm in the baptism and I'm leading the baptism. <clears throat> and this is the good one, so <laughs> we'll see if we can't break him today. All right, dearly beloved everyone here, let us hear the command of our Lord Jesus Christ concerning holy baptism. And Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Let us next hear how graciously our Lord Jesus Christ receives little children and opens the doors of the kingdom of God for them. And they were bringing children to him so that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Permit the children to come to me. Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it at all. And he took them in his arms and began blessing them, laying his hands on them. So in thankfulness and in faith, we bring our children to the Lord in holy baptism in order that they may share in his blessings. And though they are sinful human beings under the law of sin and death, may become children of God by grace in the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. Eternal and almighty God, we thank you that in your church you have instituted baptism in your name, and that in baptism you promised to be our Father, to save us from sin through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Redeemer, and to regenerate and sanctify us by your Holy Spirit. Receive this child, Micah, whom we bring before you, and let him receive the eternal blessings of holy baptism. Grant that he may grow up in your church as your child. Let the fear and love of God always be a part of his home. Teach him to fear and love you and preserve him from all evil until he shall come into you in your heavenly kingdom. Amen. It makes it easy when they're so sweet sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. It's awkward talking about my own kid that way. Um, okay, so this is to... Uh, our sponsors as well as uh, to us. Do you renounce the devil in all his works and all his ways? If so, answer, yes, I renounce them. Yes, yes I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you believe in God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If so, answer, yes, I believe. Yes, yes I, I believe. believe. All right, now this is just to us. <laughs> Do you parents desire that Micah Daniel be baptized into the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit? If so, answer, we do. We do. Do you promise to instruct him in the word of God and to nurture him in the fear and love of the Lord? If so, answer, we do. We do. <laughs> the Lord keep us in our going out and our coming in from time forth, and this time forth and forevermore. Okay. Uh, hold them over here, uh, back here, so it's for the camera. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Okay, I need you to move over, buddy. Uh, over toward mommy. All right, receive the sign of the cross upon your mind, Micah, and upon your heart as a token that you shall believe in the crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, Micah Daniel Zimbor, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, can you hand me the little tiny yes. napkin thingy? Yeah. There you go. Dry off, kid. Yeah. Good job not crying. All right. Mommy, take that away. All right. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has made you his child in holy baptism and has received you into his kingdom in believing church, strengthen you with his grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Yeah. All right, so that's the easy part. Now the charge, the ch charge to you guys. Um, and wow, it does that to you guys before us even. All right, so sponsors, Jim, D, Ryan, you are now witnesses that Micah has been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you promise to encourage the parents of, of him in their God-given privilege of raising their child to pray for them and to assist them in any way necessary for the spiritual welfare of him. If so, answer, I do with the help of God. I do with the help of God. In the event that the parents of Micah are not able to care for him or her, uh, him and instruct him in the Christian faith, you have committed yourselves to undertake that responsibility. 
You promise that you will pray for Micah and that you will see that Micah is given instruction in the Christian faith. If so, answer, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. May Almighty God bless you and strengthen you in this task. All right. This is my favorite part because now it's your responsibility too. <laughs> and mine that way as a con- as congregation member. So to the congregation we say you are witnesses as well that Mike and Daniel has been baptized into the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You are also to remember him in your prayers before God and to make certain as far as possible that he is brought up in the faith and fear of God so that he may abide in Christ from this day forward, even now, even as though as now through baptism, he has been grafted into him. We believe that God gives the gift of faith in baptism, but that this gift will be lost unless the child is taught the word of God, upheld by prayer, and given a Christian example to follow. This is first the responsibility is to us as parents, and to you as sponsors, and to all of us as the congregation here at St. Peter. May we be faithful in this responsibility and privilege. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. All right, you passed. You didn't cry. Okay. Well, we have yep, final little tasks here. There you go. Thank you. Yep. And for Mommy. All right. Amen. Clara was talking about how her baptism was here in February, many, many moons ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, amen. God bless you guys. Go ahead and have a seat. And then it's the reading. Right? Yep. And we'll have our readings in just a second. Aaron's going to put the okay, gotcha. cap back on there. Gotcha. Kevin asked if I would do the reading of the scriptures this morning, and I thought, what a privilege to read the scripture in my brother's church. So. So proud of my brother. He's the older brother. So um, growing up, that wasn't always a feeling. But now sitting, standing here as an adult, how proud of him I am and how blessed you are to have him as your pastor. So, Our reading from the Old Testament this morning is in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. New Testament reading is from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by, baptize into de- by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Praise the Lord. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> and then we'll stand for the reading of the gospel this morning. I read Fury. That part. Oh, you read that part. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I forgot to tell you that part. So you get for hamming it up so much. That's right. At this time, I also neglected to, we, I included a verse, Jackie wanted uh, the Bible verse that we did, we chose for Micah when, when he was born, 
to be at his baptism. So I got it printed in the bulletin, and I forgot to reference it as a baptism. So I'll read that first, and then I'll read our gospel lesson. At Micah 6, 8, which is a verse we cling to for our son, um, we have a verse for each of them. And uh, don't ask me what the other ones are off the top of my head right now. <laughs> but Micah 6, 8, uh, He has told you, God has told us, O man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. So great advice for us this year as we begin it. Um, our gospel lesson this morning, the good news for us today, comes from the book of Mark, chapter 1, beginning with verse 4. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. Here ends our Gospel lesson. <clears throat> Continue our service with our confession of our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. Um, not you, Tim. You're on. Yeah, Tim asked if he could sing this morning, and I thought, oh, we have a baptism. It's going to be a full service. And then I said, what song are you singing? And, and uh, he shared what it was. I'm like, yeah, we could really use that this week, and especially after yesterday. So, Thank you, Pastor. Yes, Tim. <clears throat> Thank you. My song is uh, Praise Bless the Lord, and I'd like to, uh, not a very good reader, but I'd like to read I'd like to read a few verses in Psalms 145. A song of praise of David, I will exalt you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your domain endures throughout all generations. Oh, it's the hard part. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever.
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawn. It's proud to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger your name is great and your heart is kind for all your goodness i will keep on singing ten thousand reasons for my heart to find Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your holy name. And on that day, when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise on ending. 10,000 years and then forevermore, forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship your holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship your holy name. Yes, I'll worship your holy Lord, I'll worship your holy name. Thank you, Tim. Yep. Appreciate it greatly. Definitely needed that today. Uh, we continue our service with our offering. Invite our ushers to come forward at this time.
Lord, we return these offerings to you, ask your blessing upon them, make them fruitful, and glorify your name through them in, in our community and beyond. We ask that you continue to give us guidance in your prayers and guidance in your spirit, that your Holy Spirit opens up to us understanding of what's going on in our country, in our, in our state, in our communities, in our homes. Help us to know how you want us to proceed and live, how to spend more time with you, how to draw closer to you, Lord, through whatever circumstances we're facing in our own individual situations. We, Lord, we turn to you, uh, return to you our thankful hearts as in these gifts of, of physical gifts, but also our time and our talents, the different treasures that you've given us in different ways. Help us to recognize the skills that you've blessed us with, that we might use them and build them and and, and, and use them to encourage other believers, to use them to enlighten those who don't know you or have no knowledge or relationship with you, that we might be useful in your kingdom for your glory. Lord, we thank you this morning for the celebration of Holy Baptism of Micah, and, and we look back on last year, and we're so thankful for the, the new life, uh, physical and spiritual, that you've brought into our, our circle here, Lord, our body of believers. We thank you for protecting us and guiding us through the last year and look forward to your blessing upon us this year as we dive into your word together. We read through Old Testament, New Testament, all of your word, which is essentially a revelation of the testimony of Jesus Christ, your life, Lord, your teaching, your guidance, your instruction to us of who we are, why things are the way they are, who you are, and how things are made right through you and how we ought to live and... and correction for when we don't live according to your plan and understanding and recognition that your grace is greater than any threat of punishment, that your grace is greater than any failings and weakness within us, and that your strength and your peace, as the psalm said to us this morning in our opening, reminds us that you are our source of strength, you are our source of peace, not ourselves or our neighbor's. So as we think of people who are struggling right now with big decisions or, or big things in their lives, we, we ask for your blessing upon them. Give them strength. Give them peace. Give them comfort and understanding. Lord, that way we ask you to bless Clara, the celebration of her, her 80 years of life, and, and guide her into more years of life with you and direct her in how you want her to operate and witness to you and to others. When we think of Alma, we ask your blessing upon her and the decisions to make with her health and the guidance of her doctors and nurses and taking good care of her and then eventual recovery and all that as well. And we ask for your strength and peace and guidance in that. And we think also of Stan, Lord. We ask that you be with him and draw him closer to you through his struggles with his health. And especially we ask for you to be with Kim and her family at this time. With the loss of her husband and grandchild and be with the parents of the grandchild as well, Lord, and uh, a pain and a loss that we, many of us will have no understanding of directly, and for those that do, we, a fresh wound reopened up often, and so we ask, Lord, that you bring us comfort, help us to, to mourn in healthy ways, to not ignore losses in our lives, we lose friends, we lose family, we lose jobs, we lose things that are important and dear to us, often, Help us to mourn in healthy ways, Lord. Help us not to bury things and, and to acknowledge that we've lost great things in our lives. But at the same time, also to acknowledge the precious gifts that we had before we lost them and the time that we had, which was a gift. We think of so many things in our lives. We look, the older we get, the more we can look back on things that, that we, we long for, we miss, and help us to look back and draw strength from what we had in that they were gifts from you. They taught us things, whether they were people or circumstances. They will forever have impacted and made us who we are and help us go forward knowing that we are that to somebody else and help us to be intentional with how we bless and encourage other people and then when, help us to recognize when we are doing the opposite, when we are, when we are tearing people down or making them feel unworthy Help us to recognize that and correct it and apologize and repent and turn back to you, Lord, so that you can give us the words and the, the ability to bless people with our words and our actions and our thoughts. 
And Lord, there's many other things in our hearts and our minds that we're thinking of, and things to be thankful for, things that we're burdened with right now, tough decisions or tough circumstances. We turn them over to you, Lord, in this moment of silence. That burden is born and shared with you from our hearts and minds now. Lord, we thank you for the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, understanding, the gentleness, and the faithfulness especially that you bestow upon us through your Holy Spirit. All reflections of your perfect love and your perfect joy and your perfect faithfulness that never gives up on us, that blesses us forever. A relationship that you are always longing for us to make deeper and yet never demanding it and forcing us to do so, but desiring for us to be drawn to you. So help draw us today closer to you in this service, in our Bible reading, in our prayer times, in the coming weeks, in the coming months, in the coming years. And all those we come in contact with or all those who are making decisions that affect our lives, especially our leaders, be with them and guide them as well, Lord. Bring them to repentance before you and acknowledgement of you as lordship. We long for your justice, O oh Lord, for those who disavow you and fight against you. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We continue with our song, God Will Take Care of You. Every day. 
Pray with me before we begin. Father, we ask your blessing upon us as we open your word. Speak to us. Let your Holy Spirit guide and direct us to what each of us needs to hear from you and help us to understand how to apply it to our lives that we may draw closer to you through hearing from you and speaking back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hate being self-conscious about the sound system, but I'm assuming you all have been able to hear me all morning, okay? Because in the past it seemed really loud and I wanted to hold back, and today I've like been singing and everything. So Steve adjusted me down nicely, so I'm hoping it's still here, here good. And that one seems really loud still, so I'm glad that worked out, though I didn't have to run and turn the sound system off when, when you sang. Thank you for singing again this morning. Um, but it doesn't mean I have to cut my sermon shorter, because there's... Even though Swede's not around anymore, there's still pressure. They, you know, you got to get us out of here in an hour, Pastor. Um, I can't make any guarantees today. I'll blame the baptism. Um, but uh, I want to begin. We're looking at the book of Mark, and uh, interesting thing, you know, like oh, it, it, it's whether we've been reading through the Bible or you know, it seems like we've been, you know, with Christmas and everything, you've been through. We've been in the Gospels a lot, especially the the beginning of them and. The, you know, Mark and Luke, they really go out of their way to talk about where Jesus came from and his birth and, and all the circumstances related to that. And then we get to Mark, and he starts right out with John the Baptist. <laughs> and you're like, well, that's not Christmassy, right? And it's like, well, the reason for that is because there was, there was a demand in the early church that, you know, as the, as the apostles were being martyred or disappearing from, from the world, you know, and God was taking them home and they were, they were dying, there was a recognition that, like, hey, these guys are going, they're leaving us, and we need, you know, everything they've been teaching us and sharing with us, we need that written down, we need that sh saved for us. And what we have in Mark is the people were clamoring, like, Peter, we want you to share your testimony of your eyewitness accounts of Jesus and your experiences with him. And so when we recognize that the book of Mark is an eyewitness testimony of Peter, so when you read Mark, Read it as if Peter is telling you, this is what I saw, this is what I experienced, this is what happened to me, this is what we did, and this is who Jesus was through the eyes of myself and my fellow apostles. And so then it makes sense that he would begin with John the Baptist because Peter was a disciple of John first. He was going to John, he was under John's teaching, and he, would, he was recognizing that John was speaking of the one to come, they were looking for that to come, they were... John's baptism of repentance was preparing the way. And Peter was part of that group that were prepared. Peter and his brother Andrew and, and their, their friends as well that we'll be looking at next week. And so it wasn't like Peter was just a random average Joe fisherman who didn't know anything of God. He was already beginning in his heart to be prepared when Jesus called him. doesn't take away from the miracle of him, Jesus calling him and saying, hey, leave your nets. But that's a whole other story. And so we begin in verse 4, we'll kind of walk through here with, with John the Baptist. And John, John appears in history, and he, what is he doing? He's baptizing in the wilderness. He isn't in the city, he's not gathering a big following, he's not leading a mega synagogue, you know, at the time. He's not looking for fame or fortune or power like many of the Pharisees were, many of our religious leaders and especially politicians today, anyone who has influence. We think of movie stars and things like that as well. They're not in it to serve us or they're not in it to benefit us they, they're in it because they want the power the fame they want the wealth whatever it might be that lures to them it's not their people so we are thankful for servant leaders in the world those who recognize the importance of God and then lead because they value others and that's what John was doing and baptizing in the wilderness he was proclaiming or preaching you could say or testifying to a baptism of repentance, a baptism that was calling people to change their hearts and minds back to God. And it was for the purpose of the forgiveness of their sins. And so all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem, that whole areas, uh, all the Jews were coming out to them. And even the Pharisees were going out, though they weren't being baptized by them. They weren't coming out to be baptized. They were coming out to see what was going on. But the people were coming because they were receptive to God's call. 
And they were going out and they were being baptized by him in the River Jordan, confessing their sins. And if this was a teaching class, we could dive into the significance of the fact of the River Jordan, which had to be crossed to get into the Promised Land, and in the various ways the River Jordan was significant throughout that, and that it was washing their, and their sins away that way and preparing them that way. But the significant thing when we read the Gospels is the fact that they were confessing that they're who they were. They weren't coming out there and saying, I'm great and I just need to be a little greater, give me God as well. They were coming out there and saying, hey, we, we have failed. We've, we've totally dropped the ball. We've been, we've been sinning against God and, and the Ten Commandments being their main guide, but also all the different laws that were in place, the Old Testament, much of which we read through last year. And they were confessing to, to John and to God thereby their sins that they would be washed away. And John was fulfilling that for them upon God's mandate upon him to do so. And again, John, we see in verse 6, the humility of John, the, the not glamorous style of John. John was not rich in any means other than spiritually. He was humble, and he was less in the world than he was more. He wore camel's hair, a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. These are the clothing and the food of the poor. This is the clothing and the food of those who didn't have means even though he had access to it, we would assume, since his parents were well-connected religiously. And he was well-known. I'm sure people, when, they, you know, when somebody's that popular and people are gathering to him, there was probably an outpouring of offerings wanting to him. We see that kind of reflected in the prophet Elijah and Elisha, in that people often would be like, well, how we want to give to you. you know, out of, we want to respond to this love and this awesomeness of God speaking through you. And you see them refuse, and you can... We don't get this in the Gospels. This would be extra. Don't take this to the bank. You know, anything outside of the Bible, don't. This is me speaking, thinking like, you know, John was probably, you know, it doesn't seem like somebody who would be like, yeah, yeah, thank you. Give me anything you want to give me. He was probably refusing or denying or even passing along to others, I would assume, anyone who wanted to bless him that way. And at the same time, he was also facing opposition, which we know too, and he was willing to stand up and he called, just as Jesus would, he called out the Pharisees and those self-righteous people that were coming to him who weren't willing to confess and acknowledge that they were sinful, who weren't willing to confess and acknowledge that they weren't perfect and that they needed God's forgiveness. And he called them out and called them brood of vipers as well and various other things. The meaning doesn't seem as strong as it would today, but it probably would be language that wouldn't be good for your ears, Alma. But he, he would stand up, and he stood up to those guys, and he wasn't afraid of them because he had God's power and strength behind him. <clears throat> and so in that, but in a sense, he was, he, he was humble, but he was strong. God was his foundation. He was doing God's work. And all of that was preaching what comes next, and his, basically his unworthiness. You know, in, in verse 7, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. The lowest servants in the household were the ones that would untie the shoes of the rich people. It was the, the slave that you didn't have any value for, that you took for granted, you know, that had no worth in the community. They were the ones that would unstrap the sandals. And that's what he's saying here. He's like, I am as worthless as that, the worthless, most worthless person you can think of in our society. That's me. I don't deserve to be in the presence of this guy. I don't even deserve to untie his sandals. And he is coming. And, and how much would that be as well? I mean, Jesus was his cousin. So it's not like he was unknown to him. His ministry hadn't begun yet, but, it, you know, like Steve's not going to start bowing down to his cousins right now, I'm sure. You know, I mean, most of us don't have that attitude towards our, our other family members. Maybe, maybe we need to be more like John in that sense. I don't know. It's not here to give you that law. That's on your own heart and between you and God. But, but the reality is he recognized the significance that, oh, this, the one coming is so much greater. Be prepared for that. And then he says, I have baptized you with water, a physical realm, a physical reality, a cleansing we have to do often, a temporal cleansing. You know, we think of how often, wash your hands, wash your hands, right, and use sanitizer. That's what he was doing. It was something you were going to have to do over and over and over again. It, it wasn't a final act. It wasn't an eternal thing. But he says, he will baptize you, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And that's not a physical thing, it's a spiritual thing. And it's not a temporal one time, a many time thing, it's an eternal, it's an eternal reality that, you know, baptized once for all, as the word says, we don't get baptized numerous times with God. And so then we get to verses 9 and 10 and 11 to wrap up here, the, specifically the baptism of Jesus. 
And in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And so again, Peter's acknowledging this, this is where Jesus, you know, here was this man. He came from Nazareth of Galilee. These are the things and details that Peter would have known. He wouldn't have known all the other stuff. He just knew that, that, the, that, that he's speaking to his testimony of what he saw as a witness of all this. And then Jesus was baptized by John. Like, so John had this baptism for the forgiveness of sins and repentance, and yet Jesus takes that same baptism. He didn't need it. He was completely sinless. He didn't need it because he didn't need to change his mind and heart to God. There's no way he could be even more, any more turned to God than Jesus Christ. But he did it because it was a part of God's plan. It was, he did it because he was part of our experience as well. And in this sense is also the anointing of him by the Holy Spirit as he begins his ministry. And so in verse 10, when he came up out of the water, immediately Jesus saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. It was kind of interesting, as, as I often on Sunday morning, usually kind of last minute, I'll, I'll take another look at the lessons. And, and it struck me um, in verse 2 of the Genesis reading, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And I'm like, wow, it almost it, it seems to be well connected to the, the baptism that way. You know, here's the Spirit coming down to the waters and hovering upon the one who was there in the beginning as well, Jesus Christ, as it, as it baptized him. And then also the reality of like, we, th we think in our, 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 our life, and, and this would be a kind of a conversation I maybe would have with my brother every now and then, he's been a little more connected to um, uh, denominations that had more of a Holy Spirit power kind of, of aspect to them. And, and we think in the world when we talk about, like, Lutherans don't talk about the Holy Spirit as often as they should. But Pentecostals, right, they're like, oh, the Spirit comes down and you're, you know, power's all over, you're jumping and dancing. And, and it's like, well, that's not what you see here, right? When the Spirit of God comes upon you, it's a humble thing. It's a powerful thing, but it doesn't provoke that type of situation or response. Jesus didn't start dancing and speaking in tongues after he came up out of the water. The Spirit descended, descended upon him like a dove, right? And you think about if you, you know, somebody who is a birder, and, and a bird comes and it, it alights gently upon the person, whoever's managing it. You know, the Spirit descends upon him like a dove, a bird of peace. And so the Spirit comes upon him, and, and it's the most powerful thing you're ever going to get in your life, access to the Spirit of God. We begin in, in our baptism, and that Spirit works in our lives as Christians. It, it works in starting to chip away all the, the rough spots around us, and it, it's what gives us the strength and ability to do any good in our lives. We can't on our own. But it, at the same time, it's not a lightning bolt of, of electricity that surges through us and blasts us away. It's the calming power of God, not to overwhelm us, but to help us, to equip us, and to remind us of, of the things that we need to remember. So I thought those are things we needed to hear today. Humble, peaceful, not lightning power, but not overwhelming, but everything we need in fair time. And then the voice of God, the Father from heaven. And here, here is probably the quintessential passage we can point to that just highlights the the reality of the, the Trinity, the, the three aspects of God that we have, the, the Father, the Spirit, and Jesus Christ, the Son, the Redeemer. All God, but they, they work in different ways at different times. And God the Father looks upon his Son, anointed by the, the Spirit, and he says, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. There's no fault found. He sees perfection because he is perfection. He is God. And why, why did he need to hear? Jesus didn't need to hear this. He, he knew it already. It wasn't like he needed that encouragement. It wasn't like he needed that statement. That statement is for us. And it's because the same thing happens when we are in relationship with Jesus Christ. When Jesus is speaking to the thief on the cross next to him and the thief on the cross acknowledges the fact that, you know what, you don't deserve to be up here. I do. And, you know, Lord, just remember me when you come into your kingdom. And then Jesus says, today you will be with me in paradise. And the reality is, with his acknowledgement of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, recognizing him and his relationship with him, at that moment, 
God the Father looks down at that thief on the cross and he says this same statement because he sees Jesus at his baptism as well instead of that thief on the cross and everything he did in the past. That was all forgotten. He says, you are my beloved son. With you I am well pleased. Each and every one of us, it's that same thing. If, we, if God is our Father, right, the only way that happens is through relationship with Jesus Christ. The church, the bride of Christ, when we marry into it, he becomes our father-in-law that way. We're children of God because he physically created us. We're physically his children as well, but spiritually children through Jesus Christ, having bonded us in in a way that can't be broken, adopted into the kingship, all these different words and, and examples that the Bible uses to tell us that we are his children through Jesus Christ. And in that sense, he sees us perfectly. Sometimes there's some parents that maybe see their kids that way and to a fault, sadly. I, uh, the teachers in here probably can attest to that. Like, oh, our, my kid doesn't do any harm. We, we kind of are the opposite. Our kids seem to be perfect angels around all the rest of you. And then they get home and, and they're like, yep, you're definitely a sinful little son of a gun. <laughs> and, uh, but the reality is God... God sees the perfection in us, not the flaws. He doesn't see the sinfulness because of Jesus. And, and the reality is, though, there are many who don't have that relationship. What, do they see? what does he see then? He sees something that his wrath needs to be poured out upon. And that's what Jesus bore on the cross for us so that he could pass on to that other thief on the cross. He could pass on to us his worthiness and remove our unworthiness. He gives us examples like John so we can see, like, this is how we should be. Yeah, we, we're not going to be that same level. Most of us are never going to be in that same circumstance. And we can't beat ourselves up to, you know, if this was Facebook, we can't hold ourselves up to that image of John or, or Daniel or you think of any other of the good ones in the Bible, right? Don't, don't hold yourself up as David. You know, like, yeah, I'm better than David. You know, I'm not, I'm not doing those sinful things. But the reality is all, all of that sinfulness is overcome. And even John wasn't perfect. He was sin sinful as well. Even Daniel was. We just don't get to see those parts because that's not what God saved for us. And he doesn't hold them up as examples for us to compare and feel little and unworthy because he, why did he get baptized? Why did he come? Why did he share his revelation to us? And Why does he bother to put himself out there and, and give us his word and preserve it through thousands of years of history? because of his love and his grace for us. It's because he says we are worthy when we say we aren't. When we fail, we second guess. You know, maybe, you know, tragedies happen like yesterday and then people play the blame game. And they're like, well, uh, they shouldn't, you know, if I, if I would have said this or I would have did that, they wouldn't have gone out and that wouldn't have happened. You know, and, and it's like it's not our fault when bad things happen. Yeah, maybe we play small roles here and there. You know, we think of some tragedies or choices people make, but each of those people make their own choices. Each people have their own circumstances. God is dealing with them one-on-one -on -one where they're at. And maybe they die young. Maybe they die old. And, and all those things are beyond our control. And they're not meant for us to know. And they're not meant for us to be responsible for. Because we're not worthy enough to take care of our own lives, let alone the lives of others and be responsible for them. And yeah, we have some responsibility. Like we, my, Jackie and myself are responsible for raising our boys in the knowledge of God. But if Noah or Ezra or Micah, God forbid, if they ever turned their back on God, that's between them and God, and we, we do the best we can. And God forbid that happens. Like that would be horrible to us. Or, even, or if they were to pass away, you know, if something takes them from us early or whatever. Well, we don't, it, it, we can't control the timing of any of that. We can't stop it, or we can, and we can't cause it. If we, you know, if it's even the good things, if we want good things to happen, we can't cause them either. But in all circumstances, we give glory to God, we give thankfulness to God, and we ask Him, "Okay, what are you teaching me? It's me and my relationship to God. It's you and your relationship to God. That that's the point. He called you here this morning. We have many of you here uh, that it's great to see, you know, and and um, you know, maybe you've been away for for the holidays, and now you're here today instead of somewhere else, and. And there's, there's a significance to that. Something brought you in this morning. Maybe it's, some of you, it's habit, probably, and relationships. But, you know, this happens to be a Sunday where you're not sick or, or where you don't have somewhere else to be. Or, and, and God has you here because he wants to tell you something today through his word. Maybe it's through something I say or something somebody else says or whatever. 
we're here to encourage one another. We're here to remind one another of different things, all things pointing to God. I'm thankful for the most part. I don't know of anybody here who's here because they want to feel significant or they want to be powerful or they want to run the church, myself included. I, none of us, I, I don't get that vibe here in this church. I'm thankful for that because I know there's many churches that's not the case. There's some people that want power, they want influence or whatever. And I'm thankful that and maybe it's the humility of farming communities or rural America or South Dakota, whatever it is. I don't, I don't care what it is. I'm thankful for it. I want us to not lose it. I want us to fight and be strong for that because it's the strength of family. Yeah, extended family, family through faith. It's worth fighting for. God is equipping us for who knows what. Let us be in the word so that we might see it revealed when the time is right that God is be like, I kept you strong or I brought you together or I tied the binds between, I made strong the ties between you because I have this plan and I want you ready for when it comes. And maybe it's coming soon. Maybe it'll be 50 years from now. Who knows? When they planted this church, I'm sure they didn't think of us 100 years later. But we were all part of God's plan. He's got something in mind for us. May we be worthy enough to recognize that we are worthy in God's sight, not our own or in others. Humble enough to, to submit to his will and to the will of others where it's in tune with him. And yet at the same time, bold enough to, to draw strength and peace from the Spirit to stand up when the time is right to speak the truth. To continue meeting and, and praising God in worship. To continue praying for one another and seeking his guidance. And to not fear the day when our own death will face us. Because we'll know that this isn't the final. This, isn't the, the, this is just a temporary box that we're in. But the eternal one that's given to us through Jesus Christ. Because he deems us worthy. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you had love for us enough to submit yourself below us and we are the most unworthy of beings. None of us is worthy on our own merit. None of us has the strength or ability to, to have a legacy that lasts 10 years past our death even or not, certainly not 100 or 1,000. We'll be forgotten quickly, long, long by many, but never by you. And eternally we will be with you, having a name forever in you, where the glory from you shines, shines. And it, just as the moonlight, really the moon is just an empty dead rock, but it reflects the light of your glory. And as we sing a song after this hymn, let us not be ashamed to share that glory and, and to demonstrate it to our kids and to one another and to our neighbors in the community. Let us not be ashamed to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ as he is worthy to be proclaimed in all circumstances. Let us not be ashamed to do that as we demonstrate to our kids the love we have through the singing of that song as well. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Oh, I didn't think about this, Alma. You're playing. I cheated last time, and, and I was looking to you for the actions. But if you do the actions, we won't have the music. So. So I invite you for this song, especially if you have kids in your pews or around us, don't hesitate to be doing the actions for this little light of mine as we sing that because it demonstrates to our kids that, you know, we can have fun in church and I'm not ashamed to proclaim that I have a light to shine. And, you know, there's no shame in that. You know, we're not, whether we're judged by, by our peers, that I want the little kids to judge me, not, not you. <laughs> and so let us sing that together with much joy as Alma plays for us. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it. Under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out, I'm gonna let it shine. 
you to please rise as you're able as we close in prayer. We pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the Lord's benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his almighty and everlasting peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and feel like you're in the gutter, well, don't. You're worthy in God's sight, and take that to heart so it may lift you up, and he may lift you up and proclaim him. And if you feel high on your high horse, make sure you're giving God the glory for that and making his name known. And go forth today with that worthiness on your heart and on your lips. Amen. <laughs>